What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we are back with some brand new WWE action figure news for you guys. If you guys missed our video from the other day, we did cover all of the WWE action figure news regarding WWE Ultimate Editions when it is regarding to WrestleMania 39 that weekend, what they revealed at the Superstore, what they revealed that entire weekend. We covered every single Ultimate Edition in the video the other day. And today, we're moving on to the WWE Elites. While I'm still working on the ranking of WWE Elite Series 1 through 100 from worst to best. Very big project. Going to be two hours plus long probably. So if you guys like those long-winded videos where you know you sit down and you watch it, it's like a freaking movie probably. It's going to be a long one. A lot of effort, a lot of work going into that video. So when it drops, I'm going to need you guys to show some love. Nonetheless, man, we're back today covering all of the WWE elites that were shown off over the Mania weekend, getting all of my full thoughts out on the table because I didn't get to really share my in-depth thoughts with all of the action figures because I was out in LA. So we are running it back. We're back here today with the Elite cover. We're going to dive into the WWE Elites. I'm going to break down every single figure and just talk about it a little bit here. And uh, let's shut the hell up and get into it, man. Let's just go ahead and start off with the main Elite line. I'm just going to rattle them off one by one. And let's start off with WWE Elite Series 102. Not only did we get like official images of these guys posted up in a gallery, we also saw these on display at the Superstore. And let's just start things off with Austin Theory. This was a part of my problems video. I wasn't a huge fan of these head sculpts, and I still am not, you know, after I've sat on it a while. I feel like they may look worse in promo images rather than in real life when you see them up close. However, Austin Theory has a really good formula. I love the, the, the gear options that we're getting here. I like the Captain America gear. I like the Chase black and silver. And I like that the Captain America is the main line. So the black and silver gives you a bit of a different take. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of the head sculpts, but, you know, a basic head swap is just, you know, seconds away nowadays with the interchangeable heads and things of that nature. Maybe we can get in a surgery, something like that. But I'm not an Austin Theory guy, but these figures do look pretty good, even though I'm not a fan of the selfie head sculpts. You know, they get the job done for whatever reason. We also had Sami Zayn here, and I am loving the mouse trap. I think that you could easily use this as an updated Sami Zayn. While I'm not the biggest fan of the expression, I think the expression just looks, I don't know, weird. Honestly, it, it's just a very cartoony and odd look for him. I still like the figure. I think that I'm probably going to head swap it with his Elite 91 figure, was it? I think it was. And so that'll be an easy thing. Not a huge deal there, but I am going to probably head swap the Sami Zayn as well. Just not a fan of these head sculpts on Austin Theory or Sami Zayn, but I do like that we're getting an update. Sami Zayn. I know this one's going to be highly sought after because it's the newest Sami Zayn and people are going to want him in like the quote unquote, you know, updated look, I guess you could say. So that'll work for a lot of people. We also had a look at the Commissioner Foley figure. Love the flannel on this guy. I touched on the painted shirt. Not a huge deal, but you know, it is sort of something worth noting. I think a cloth shirt would have probably looked better. I like the Commissioner, you know, thing that goes on the desk. I'm probably going to put that potted plant and that Commissioner deal in my GM's office. You got the gavel in the hand. Great looking head sculpt on this guy. I like the flannel. I'm probably going to put this flannel on one of my Brock Lesnar's. I think that would be a really cool fix-up, so we'll see what comes of that as well, but really liking the Commissioner Foley outside of the painted on torso. We also had a look at Elite Series 102 Edge. You know, we hate the torso they use for Edge. I, I just don't like the Daniel Bryan torso. I think it works for just a minuscule amount of people, man. Not many people really accurately fit the Daniel Bryan torso, in my opinion. I think that guys like Xavier Woods that they've updated in the past and kind of gave him a, a newer torso, I think they need to do that with a lot of guys, right? Like, this th this obviously does not fit a solo Sokoa. This does not fit guys like Daniel Bryan. This doesn't fit guys like Finn Balor, in my opinion. I think you, like, I think Sami Zayn is fine, I guess, you know, but I honestly wish they would just retire this torso. I hate it for AJ Styles. So, you know, just guys like that. I think that, you know, we've seen enough of it, and the purples are kind of all over the place. I think the head sculpt looks really good, and while it's a Judgment Day gear, and, you know, the whole storyline that kind of has unfolded and kind of culminated at WrestleMania versus the Demon Finn Balor. Having that figure here, I think the figure looks great. It's just a funny moment in time being all we know about it now, but it's a great looking figure. Probably going to update the torso. Don't like the rubber jacket, but the head sculpt's cool, and I like the black and purple gear, even though some of the colors, I don't know how accurate they are. I like the purple elbow pads. It's just, I think I looked at photos of this gear just the other day, and the purples are kind of all over the place, but it's still a cool figure. It's very toyetic, but I think one of the standouts in this set is going to be Elite 102 Gunther, and this figure looks Im impressive as hell. I even asked Bill and Steve about this one with their torso choice here. This is a brand new sculpted torso, and I love this torso. This is a great torso for Gunther. I think it fits him pretty damn good. He, his formula looks great. I think it's a great update to Gunther. Great head sculpt. You have the cloth goods jacket. This is a fantastic figure. I love this figure. I think this is going to be one of the top elites of 2023, and hopefully one, Elite 102 should be arriving in the next couple weeks, if I had to guess. You know, we've seen the promo images. We saw them on display at WrestleMania, 
or the WrestleMania Superstore. So I think these figures are probably going to be in our hands relatively soon. And then we have our Judgment Day Rhea Ripley. And I do like that we have sort of a quote-unquote updated Rhea Ripley here, but I hate that she has a lot of her tattoos covered up. Like, I love the leg tats here. I like the boots. I think everything looks good here. Head sculpt looks very similar to our Elite 84 figure. I still think it looks good and everything. I just really wish that uh, her, you know, her tattoos weren't covered up by this one sleeve here. And then I also wish that it didn't have the, I guess that's supposed to be a mesh shirt underneath her other gear that's covering her other tattoos. I'd really like to see a Rhea Ripley with all of her tattoos out and, you know, what she looks like in the ring today. But this is a great update for now. And I'm I'm sure she's obviously going to be coming down the line, but I like the Rhea Ripley figure. I'm looking forward to getting this one. Next up, guys, we saw WWE Elite Series 103 getting into the Stardust figure. This was one of my favorite reveals from the weekend. This is a figure that I've been waiting on. You know, there was speculation that the Stardust figure had been replaced by RVD or Rob Van Dam, and that was not the case, you know, and I love that we're getting the WrestleMania 32 Dusty Rhodes Stardust here with the ladder. Great inclusion. This was the best match at WrestleMania 32 off memory, and it really got me excited man that that just go back and watch the match bro the just beautiful match great way to open up the show i do believe it did open and this this is a this is the best looking stardust to me i think it's iconic De deserves an elite. And then you also had the Chase version, which I don't know which one I like more. I really love the colors of the Chase version. I think it's going to be a beautiful figure. Once it, like, you see how good the Elite 103 regular version looks. You look at the blue on the, the upcoming Elite and the boots and stuff like that. I still think it's going to be great, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be the sleeveless Cody or the sleeveless Stardust. I really like the way that looks, but moving on to the rest of the set. This one was one of my favorite reveals though. I, I loved it. I thought this was a great inclusion here. The definitely the gear that I wanted for Stardust. We have our Liv Morgan figure Figure. Great updated Liv Morgan here. She's got some green going on. She's got her money. She's got the Money in the Bank briefcase. Updated WWE Women's SmackDown Championship. Elite 85 reuse of the head sculpt. I don't mind it that much. It's going to be a fine figure. You know, double jointed arms, double jointed knees. They're still giving her the basic Alexa Bliss style kick pads, which are really firm and they allow the figure to stand up. It's just, you know, I just wish they would tool some new stuff, but I guess they're always focused on the next thing and trying to get newly sculpted stuff in other ways that they just kind of get by with this similar to the Hulk Hogan belt he did address the Hulk Hogan belt in a live stream I watched and Bill said that it's just not priority so I'm guessing women's kick pads and basic you know boots that they appear on their action figures all the time in the elite line is just not a priority for them but I like this Liv Morgan I like the gear I like the chains coming down very unique looking Liv Morgan here I like it a lot these two figures right here won the weekend for me man the elite 103 Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins with the cloth goods in the Miami Vice gear with their Kobe and LeBron reference jerseys. These figures look fantastic, man. If you guys know me, you know that Elite 81 Profits disappointed me heavily. Now, I'm not going to lie. These guys do have a couple issues that I'm addressing right now in the video because it's going to come up in my review. They don't have lower leg cut, which is not just super egregious, but it definitely bothers me that these guys are not going to have that. They're also not going to have pins in their lower legs, so it won't be something that you can switch out. And they also have John Cena feet, which are going to bother me that mold is so old, but these figures won the weekend because these are such upgrades, especially Angelo Dawkins. This Angelo Dawkins figure made me pop so hard when I saw it. I was flipping out. It was unbelievable. I love these figures, and in the interview, they also said that these uh, cloth goods are not going to be Velcro. They're just like the Ultimate Edition Stone Cold Steve Austin. You can throw them right over. It's got the number and their names on the back. Double jointed arms. It does look like Montez Ford probably has the same head sculpt, but I like the new Angelo Dawkins head sculpt. I think it works. These are great figures. These are two of my favorites. You know, you got your MDT colors in there. You have the Kobe reference, basketball related, street profits. I mean, you're all up all the alleys that I love to navigate. So this is beautiful. These two figures right here are two of my favorites. No doubts about it. I love these figures. Cannot wait to get these in hand. We also saw an updated Roman Reigns Elite. One thing that people are not mentioning that I've seen about this figure is that he comes with a pointer finger that actually has the glove, the Roman gauntlet sculpted onto the hand. So this is a new hand. We have the three pack head sculpt. It does look like he actually is going to have the Roman Reigns logos on the boots. It's very hard to see from this angle. I think I got some footage of it though on, uh, on some of my footage, but we have the Blue Universal Championship. You do have the necklace or the lay there. This is excellent. I, I actually like this Roman Reign. I mean, it's not my favorite of all time, but you do get some new additions here, so it's not just another run-of-the-mill Roman Reigns. You are getting a little bit of differences here. You're getting some newly updated stuff. I really am still waiting on the white Acknowledge Me or white Head of the Table shirt, but is that too far gone now? He hasn't worn that in a while, so that may not be something we ever get. May have to do a custom shirt there, but the Roman Reigns is definitely a solid addition here. It's going to move units. And then 
then rounding out Elite 103, you do have Bobby Lashley here in the black and yellow with the U.S. title, with the Bobby Lashley side plates, which is a great addition. Solid looking head sculpt here. I am looking forward to the ultimate. I'm, I'm going to see, you know, when you look at all the different Bobby Lashleys we've gotten over the years, he's going to have quite a bit of figures, man. You throw in the top talents. You got this Elite 103. You have the ultimate. You have the Elite 95. You have the Elite 69. I mean, Bobby Lashley has quite a bit of Mattel figures now, and for I'm glad because I, I like Bobby Lashley. I'd like to see a throwback, possibly. I know we've seen one or two before, but I'd still like to see some more. I'd like to see some throwback Bobby Lashleys, but this one gets the job done for me. I like it. You also had the top talents line. Now, this Roman Reigns in this wave is a run-of-the-mill Roman Reigns. You're not getting any new stuff. You got the head on the table. Universal title, same head sculpt, nothing changing with the Roman Reigns here. We do have the Jimmy Uso included in this wave. This is one that I've had in hand. I've had this in my collection for maybe a month or two now, and this was something that I really love. I love this figure. I love the new deco on the pants. Black Jogger Uso has been waiting forever, and it is kind of a repaint, right? But I still like it. I think that's a great addition, and I'm looking forward to getting another set of, of the Usos, man. I love Uso figures. Collecting Usos and Roman Reigns are, are very fun because there's so many different looks you can give them and fix up some things of that nature, and we've been booking the bloodline for years and years now, so having more figures of them is always a nice plus. And then we have this Rock figure, which is just, it just goes to show, this figure will probably sell, but I do not like it. I really wish they would stop giving him this so for me personally, I don't think I've ever said this in a video, I don't think, or I've never addressed my thoughts on this. I may have in all the videos I posted on the channel, but when you're dealing with a more modern rock, when it's not, anything like Hollywood rock and before should be this torso, and then I think anything when he came back to fight Cena and up to modern day should be the same torso they give Roman Reigns, and that's, that's where I stand on the rock figures. I think that this smaller torso that they have here works better for throwback rocks, which I guess technically this is a throwback back rock, but you get what I'm saying. I like the bigger jack torso for modern day rock or more modern day rock, and then I like this smaller torso for, you know, Attitude Era, Hollywood rock, and, you know, anything like O2 and and before. So that's something I'd like to address there. But, because when you put this up next to his Ultimate Edition, look at the differences in the shreddedness. Just something to mention there. We also had to look at some Legends figures, man. We had Brother Love here. He was also on display a few ways. I love the white suit. You know, I thought the head sculpt was a bit saturated when I was sitting in person. A bit over the top, but I still like it. I like the Book of Love. Love the oversized mic. I like the rings on the fingers. I like that he gave them the Randy Orton hands as well. I'm gonna definitely, between this and Ted DiBiase in the next set with the white suits, gonna be running crazy with me. I'm going to try and get myself some white suits to wear on MDT television. We have the Cowboy Undertaker is what I like to call it. This figure just looked sweet as hell in person. Really just captures the badassery of the Undertaker. I just think he looks so damn evil here. He looks so menacing. I love the cowboy hat and the sleeveless look. I'd love to see like a cloth overthrow, but this was a badass figure. This one I'm actually looking forward to a lot. And we've seen so many looks of Undertaker. I mean, he has some of the most elites from Mattel of all time. He's been around since the beginning, but this figure really stands out on a shelf to me. We have D'Lo Brown with the regular version and then the Chase version. A look we've been waiting on for a very long time. So getting an updated D'Lo Brown with double jointed arms and all the bells and whistles looks very good. And then you also have Kama here. So I like all three of these. I, I like the blue and black of D'Lo Brown there. I like the torso choice. And that Elite, that flashback elite he got a long time ago has been gone for a while now so getting another D'Lo Brown is I think a great addition into the elite line and a great addition to the legends line I think this is, these are two great figures here to plug into our legends figures and then we also had legends series 20 I think it's legends series 20 and maybe legends series 21 I want to say it's 20 though yeah Greg the Hammer Valentine here newly sculpted legs that I did identify on site I said those are new legs and they said yes it is and I said you damn right it is Brad then you have the music jacket he's got the breakaway guitar which needs to retire but figure looks good was never a Greg the Hammer Valentine guy, but I still like the way this figure looks, and I like the newly sculpted legs. I'm excited to see where they use that later on down the line with other figures. We have Ted DiBiase in the white suit and the green suit, and we talked about these figures. I, I like the white suit a hell of a lot, and he does come with the old man Ted, or NXT Ted as they like to call it, so you get your green suit elite, you get your white suit elite, and you come with interchangeable heads, so you can, you know, choose your own Ted DiBiase head sculpt there, which is pretty cool. Then we also have Mr. Perfect in the in the yellow. They also said that this, this shirt is going to be very similar to The Undertaker. No idea how that's going to look. They mentioned something about the way it fits the figure and it fits better than previous versions, but I'm liking the detail in the boots as well. Solid head sculpt. I think this is a run-of-the-mill Kurt Hennig, but it looks really good to the character, and you can never really dock football points when you talk about a figure that represents the character on television. That is what I always try to identify with with the figure. When I look at a new WWE Elite or Ultimate, I say, does this look like the character that I see on my television? And if that is the case, then it's a, it's a money win for me. 
and that, that works here for Mr. Perfect. We also have Triple H here. I think this is all going to depend on the gear. You're basically getting elite repack of the two-pack Triple H that we saw with the Jeff Hardy. It's going to depend on the gear. I, I love the t-shirt inclusion here. This is not quite a Triple H that we've seen before. I hope that the tights are, you know, around that 99, 2000s Triple H. Head sculpt's been reused before from the Ultimates and stuff, but I still like this figure, and I think it's a solid inclusion. Seeing Triple H in the Legends line does not make me lose sleep. I think it's a great inclusion. Moving right along, we do have the Ruthless Aggression Elites, which are unfortunately going to be discontinued, but we do have the Edge figure here. My man Brett actually got this as a gift from Mattel, and I actually got one of the figures in this set as well from Mattel, but I did not get the Edge. He was the only guy that got the Edge. Great figure here, man. I don't know when this thing's going to hit stores, so that that's actually a really rare piece that he's got right now. This Edge figure looks fantastic. I, I love it. The purple camo looks fantastic. Great new head sculpt. I'm looking forward to this Edge a lot. They have some ideas for him. That's all I'm going to say about that. We also had JBL here. Not my favorite gear, but it is different than his Elite 23. I think they could have gotten away with just giving us the Elite 23 redone here. I don't like the torso they always use for him. I think he could use a much larger torso. JBL was a massive guy, but head sculpt looks good. I like the cowboy hat. I like the entrance gear and stuff like that, and it is a different take. He could easily you know, paint this guy up, do some surgery on him, and make him into a JBL from Elite 23, but I think the Elite 23 gear would have been cooler. It's been so long since we've gotten that figure. I just think it would have been a great figure. Maybe that's something they can explore in the Greatest Hits line, maybe. I think that would be a great addition, but I like the JBL. I'm all for Ruthless Aggression figures. We also had the Miz here, which is a figure that looks great. It looks much better than his Elite 3. You got the suspender sculpted on there. You got the hat. Newly sculpted glove hands. This is a cool Miz figure, even though it's from, like, the era of Miz that I hate the most, and I just... The Miz is probably one of my top most disliked wrestlers of all time. While I respect him and all that, I just always, like, like hated him. It was always just like a thorn in my side. This is the look of the Miz that I've always hated the most. We also have MVP here in the black and silver and white. Very clean gear. I think it looks great. It looks like they did repaint the Elite One head sculpt, which is very interesting here, but I like the gear. I think it gets the job done. You know, you were, you're working with some good stuff here. A double jointed throwback MVP is, is beautiful for me. I like the chains. I, I like the figure overall. I like the great looking MVP figure right here. So now we're going to have three different MVPs from, you know, like a throwback era with his corn rows and stuff like that. We also had Hollywood Rock. Now, Hollywood Rock, you guys are probably wondering about the torso tat. I think this is just a proto here, so I think they are actually going to update that and remove that, and it's actually going to be accurate on the final figure from what I've seen. So we'll see about that. Hopefully, you know, it, it will be updated, but the belt buckle here is fantastic, dude. This Rock figure is great. I think it's a great representation of Hollywood Rock. I love the belt buckle crotch. I think that's an excellent piece. When I see this figure, I think of Here Comes the Pain, because that was like his alternate gear on that game. We also have Tori Wilson, which is a figure I actually have meant on card now because Mattel gifted it to me, which I was very, very appreciative of. Probably going to do a review of this on the channel, or I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe just be a random unboxing or something like that, but I do have the Tori Wilson figure. It looks great. I think it do it's a perfect representation of her. Next up, guys, we are diving into the Greatest Hits Wave Series number two. Lots of weird stuff going on in this set, which we'll address, but getting into the first figure, we have DDP here. Not a figure I think really d like needed to be here, and I know a lot of this figure figure had weird with distribution problems and things like that. Like, I understand that completely. Not everybody had an opportunity to get this. I don't even own this figure, but it wasn't my first thought. When I saw DDP in the Greatest Hits wave, like, on the list, I was thinking that it would be his Legends or his Elite 36 figure. Just because this figure had just released not too, too long ago. I understand the distribution problems, however. Like, I, I totally understand that. It's just not what my first, you know, thought was, so I definitely will be getting my hands on this. We also had HBK here, which is such a great inclusion. I think I like the inclusion of this figure the most out of any other figure in the Greatest Hits series number two. I like it more than the Harley Race, even though the Harley Race is, is super rare. I think it's just because this is a figure I've been more sought after instead of the Harley Race, and I just love this Shawn Michaels. This is, I think this is the best Shawn Michaels head sculpt they've ever done, or it's definitely top three, and I just love this figure, so I'm looking forward to this one. It's going to have double jointed arms, so this will be great for the Sean shelf, and maybe it'll be one that I can get multiples of. We also have King Harley Race again. This is probably the one that I'm second most hyped for, one that's obviously highly sought after, one of the more rarer WWE elites. Much like DDP had major distribution problems, not a lot of people had an opportunity to cop this King Harley Race. It's a beautiful figure. I think the crown looks great, the cape looks great, formula looks great, head sculpt looks great. It's going to be updated. I mean, this is a money figure right here, man. This is good stuff. We also have Blue 
Lutista, which is another head scratcher, I think. I think, like, the Elite 2, the Elite 6, I feel like are probably more sought after. Batista figures. But, you know, Blue Tista's here, and, it, they, you know, they repainted a little bit. They got an updated head sculpt. They, they tw you know, they tweaked it a little bit here, and I think this does look better than his Blue Tista figure. So, or the first go around, I should say. And I'm a big Batista fan, so I'm all for Batista figures. I just think Blue Tista, I don't know if Blue Tista would have been the first thought for re-releasing Batista figures that I would have thought of. I think even the Elite 72 Batista would have been a better re-release than this, but who am I? We also have the Undertaker from the Hall of Champions wave. Great figure here. One of my favorite Hall of Champions figures they did. I think it's a beautiful inclusion. Great looking head sculpt. Double jointed Undertaker arms. Oh, dude, what a sick ass figure. I already own it, but having the updates with everything going on is going to be a beautiful addition, so I'm all for a Hall of Champions Undertaker re-release. And then, of course, we have everyone's favorite from the set, which is going to be the cash-in Toys R Us exclusive Seth Rollins. I always love the original head sculpt and this one doesn't look bad it's got true effects technology you know we asked him about this in the Mattel interview I think that they still could have done so much more with this figure I do understand that they're doing just straight up re-releases but can you imagine this figure with all the bells and whistles on it I just cannot fathom how much better this figure could be Seth Rollins side plate smaller money in the bank briefcase entrance vest updated formula chest hair glove sculpt I'm all for the head sculpt I really don't mind the head sculpt I think you can get away with this head sculpt but holy crap man the more I think about that figure, the more I just want to do it myself. And I may just, you know, have to Thanos this thing. I love the original. I just think that this isn't what people imagined for the Greatest Hits line when they, you know, when they thought it up. And they, you know, we saw Seth Rollins on the Greatest Hits. We all thought it'd be Elite 45 updated, which always got me hyped. And now knowing that's not going to come for, to fruition, I know a lot of people were disappointed in that. But, you know, we kind of set ourselves up for that. So, you know, it is what it is here. But, you know, figure's not bad. It's not bad. It's just, you know, something that we got to talk about. Got to you know, definitely wanted to address it. We addressed it in the problems video. It's just, I wanted to cover it again here because we're covering every elite we saw over that weekend. Now, after the Ruthless Aggression elites, they did say that the new Walmart exclusive line is going to be the Monday Night War set battling between WWE and WCW. We had some very cool inclusions in this wave. I'm loving the new Undertaker we got. We got the grayed out, you know, scale prototype here. He has Ultimate Edition boots here. We also saw the render image. I think the grayed out figure looks a lot better than the render image, in my opinion but this is a badass looking figure. I'm very much looking forward to this. Adding to the long list of Undertaker figures. This is a beautiful looking taker. I'm very much excited for this one. We also have a new Stone Cold. They did say that this is going to pretty much be an updated version of the Defining Moments Way Back, which is one of my personal favorite elites they've ever done. So having the double jointed arms and the updates. This is going to be the Ultimate Edition head sculpt, but he should have the Austin 316 shirt, the camo jacket. He's going to have the hat. He's going to have the can of beer soda. This is going to be great. Very much looking forward to this, Austin. This is going to be one that I cop every time I see it, just for the amount of fix-ups we can do. Same thing goes for Austin that we're going to see later in this video, which I've been waiting for years for them to do, which we'll get into. However, we also have a look at the new Hulk Hogan torso in this wave. This is actually a figure I'm very much looking forward to. We got to see the render image of it. I think this figure is going to be super badass. I think the all black just looks so slick. I love the new torso. I think this is a beautiful Hulk Hogan. And with that updated torso, with the new skin tone that's going to be across all Hulk Hogan figures, and they're going to have like their modern Hogan's and their throwback Hogan's and they're going to have like that torso that represents all of it. I think these Hogan figures are really going to take a step up and his figures are really fun to collect. I know that they release them over and over but now that they're going to be more accurate and they're going to represent the character more I think it's going to hit in that nostalgia pop and his figures are going to sell even more than they already did. So I know he has the throwback belt that they're still using that terrible belt sculpt where it doesn't have the loop or you know the actual belt part like the belt buckle. Somebody you know I can tell you right now if somebody out there has a 3D printer and you're listening to this video and you want to open up some business for yourself, learn how to 3D print a belt for your Hulk Hogan and Cody Rhodes action figures and 3D print them hose up and people are going to buy them like hotcakes. You know, offer them in white and black and red and yellow and all these different molds with the belt buckle and all those different things. Make sure it's flexible to be able to like, you know, clasp around the figure. Get yourself with a customizer, paint them up, put some freaking decals on there, sell them in belt packs or something like that, dude. I think you're, that you're missing out on a gold mine. If they're not going to address this issue and Bill said that it's not a priority so it doesn't look like anytime soon we're going to have an updated belt sculpt. It may be something you want to look into for the weight belt for Hulk Hogan. I'm just saying I think that there may be a market out there for updating these Hulk Hogan and Cody Rhodes belts and you can make it more accurate. I don't know man just something to think about. Definitely think about it. I'd do it but I don't have the time or the energy. But also in the set we also got to see Denim Scott Hall and we, we've already talked about the legs. You know they, they said that they're going to try to address it. They're going to try to fix the formula before it gets released which this is pretty early on now. Like 
I don't think we're going to see this. We may see this figure by the end of 2023. I mean, we're in April. We have eight months till the end of 2023. You might see an update to this figure before it gets released. Not going to hold my breath, but he is going to come with a ponytail head sculpt that's interchangeable. And I, I like this inclusion. I think this is a great inclusion in this line. I just wish it was accurate with the lower legs, but they're going to talk about it. They're going to look into it. And we address it in our problems video again. And then we also had a look at the build a figure Lex Luger that's going to come with his cloth good shirt. I think this is one of, this is the first ever, or it's one of the first ever. It's like one of the first three build a figures that is not in a suit for Mattel and WWE. So I think that's really cool. I can't wait to see how they expand upon that, like who they're going to end up including in the build a figure waves. You know, what they're going to do for that. I think that sound that sounds amazing. I hope they do do that. So, you know, we can get some newer guys in here and get some figures we've never seen and stuff. But this is a cool inclusion. Not my favorite pick for a build a figure, but I still think it's a really cool addition to, to step outside the box a little bit. Get some guys that aren't in suits. You know, that's ran its deal for a while now, so it would be nice to see you know, some newer inclusions and things like that. Before we get into the Mattel panel reveals and the Mattel Design Center reveals where they showed off all the prototypes and getting in all of that and breaking it down with the renders and the actual figure, let's take a look at the new return of the Defining Moments line in this four-pack, man. This is a set that I think looks amazing. I, I love the packaging, how they've tied it into the old Defining Moments packaging back into the new. You're getting four great characters here that I think are going to move units. You have this big box set that comes with all four figures in it or you can buy the figures individually, which I think is beautiful. I think these are four great figures. I know you're getting a repaint with one. I guess technically you're kind of getting a repaint with two of them, but I still love the way these figures look, man. I love the box set. Let's dive into them one by one, man. Starting off with Brett the Hitman Heart. I love this edition. I know we just got the Ultimate Edition all pink attack Brett with the pink jacket, but we are getting a cloth goods jacket here, and I still like it. I love Brett Hart figures, you know? I think that the pink just looks so damn cool. You guys know that pink is one of my favorite colors, so seeing it here with the white and the black. It's just beautiful contrast. He has some of the best boots ever. I like this inclusion of the Defining Moments wave. I'm all for this Bret Hart figure. We have the Shawn Michaels which is absolutely gorgeous. Love the entrance gear. Like the new, like, repainted retooled head sculpt. You have the cowboy hat. Love the Texas gear. This is a Shawn Michaels that I'm very much looking forward to as well. I've always been on board with uh, more Shawn Michaels. We want more Shawn Michaels. We want more long pants Shawn Michaels, but damn, we want some more tight Shawn Michaels as well. I'd like to see some 2003 Shawn Michaels, but you know, we got one. We got one from around that era, so we'll talk about that, which isn't perfect, but uh, it's a gear we've been waiting on, so we'll get into that. But this Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart both look really awesome. Then we have the Cody figure. Now, this is one that I'm going to absolutely have to get two of, maybe even three. I, I just love the way this figure looks. I know it's ringside exclusive, so it's not going to be one that's easily accessible, but the first thing that came to my mind, like, having a torn pet Cody is a figure that we've talked about on the channel. We speculated it. You know, Cody's known about this figure coming for months and months, maybe even a year now he may have known about this figure. Or maybe he had he didn't tear his pec over a year ago. I can't remember off the top of my dome, but the first thing I'm going to do with the first figure, like the one that has the torn pec, I'm going to review it as it is, and then I'm going to take this figure, and I'm going to detail the hell out of that bruise and make it look more accurate to what it actually looked like, because I don't think it actually, it doesn't take up the full pec like I think it does, and it's kind of lacking some of the detail. I'm going to make that thing look ugly. I'm going to make it look more authentic, but another thing I'm going to do with this figure is I'm going to take one of these and then torso swap it with a regular Cody so I can have this gear with no t a torn pec or no bruise at all, so then you could have your torn pec version with more accurate bruise, and then you can have your version that doesn't have any bruise whatsoever for whatever the hell you want to do. So that'll be really fun to do, but I look forward to that. It's pretty much a repaint of Elite 101, but I do like it. And I'm not a big fan of the, you know, the cowbell accessory here, the long rope, because it is rubber, so it's not going to be easily posable. I mean, you throw a bendy wire in there, it would add to it, but I think a form-fitting rope would have been really sweet. And then the last figure in the set, which is probably my least favorite figure in the set, is going to be the Mankind. I love the head sculpts. I think that the Mankind figure... Head sculpts, again, look really, really cool. I love the tooth and the nose. You know, a lot of people were thinking that would be a really dope head sculpt, and they nailed it here. But this figure, like I said in our problems video, I just think he looks so jacksy, man. Like, the torso is huge here. It's very long, and it looks like his proportions are a little bit wacky. I love the torn sleeves on the arms, but he just looks big, man. He looks so, so big, and I don't think this quite captures his actual build from around this time during this matchup, all those different things. But I'm still looking forward to the figure. I'm excited to see what it looks like and how it comes out. But I still think that the torso is too big here, which... Even even in the packaging, he just looks like he has a really long torso, but uh, I digress. I'm interested to see what's under there, you know? Maybe that'll be 
something we can do, you know, get one of them, cut the shirt off and just, you know, sacrifice a mankind to the gods just to see if we can see exactly what he's working with under there. But the return of the defining moments line is something that I, I was all for. It was something I was most looking forward to at WrestleMania weekend. You know, I, I mentioned it multiple times. I wanted to see what the future of the defining moments was going to be and it blew me away. So I'm all excited for it. Even though I disagree with the mankind torso, I still think overall it's damn cool and I'm really excited for it. Outside of that, we also got to see some panel reveals, and we got to see the Mattel Design Center figures. Now, I hope I don't get lost in the sauce here, so I probably just need to do them in order, because so, the way they're stored on my computer, they're kind of like all over the place. I don't want to miss one, but I'll do my best here. Starting out first, we have AJ Styles. And this AJ Styles figure, love the head sculpt and the interchangeable shirt. It's what we saw with the Ultimate Edition. But this is a guy that just needs an updated formula, man. He needs an updated formula. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the custom AJ Styles with Sin Cara Torso. But it looks so damn good. My boy Gene Addy over there, he did that custom like years and years ago. And it represents AJ Styles so much better. I think he also gives him Sin Cara thighs. So he's got more of a beefy thigh. He's got the regular AJ Styles lower legs. But he throws in that more beefy torso. This is something that Mattel definitely needs to look into. And it's something I'm... It, the, this year is going to be, from now until the end of the year, I am going to be in Mattel's ear constantly, just constantly, I'm going to be in their ear about fixing AJ Styles and his action figures and trying to see if we can get an updated formula. I'm going to try, I'm going to put plant a damn flag on a hill and I am going to do everything in my power to get AJ Styles fixed. So that is something that I don't know what we need to do, start a hashtag, I, I don't know, I'm going to do something, I, I got to think of something. I'm going to be in their ear about it. But this figure, I like the red gear. I like that we're getting a red AJ Styles. I think they will add knee pads to this guy. At least hopefully they will. But he comes with two sweet hands. I'm all for an AJ Styles. I just hate the formula they give him. I just wish they would update him. But speaking of bad formulas, Solo Sokoa. We've addressed this here. We already saw his prototype figure. And I'm really worried. Something that I just noticed. Looking at this figure here in the render and then looking at the prototype image, you guys will notice that he doesn't have his waist wrap. I hope they're not thinking, oh, we'll just put a... a like we'll put a belt around his waist and it'll make it look like it's covering his belly button and it'll make it more accurate to solo but his arms are way too small shoulders are too small torso's too small the legs and calves and thighs are way too skinny and i hope that they're not thinking oh i'll just throw a a belt that you can clasp together or they'll throw like a jimmy hart belt wrap around his waist or something of that nature i hope that's not what they do man they gotta fix this guy's formula we addressed it in the problems video this figure I did not see until after my interview with Mattel or I would have definitely brought this up. This figure has to be addressed in a lot of ways. This doesn't look like Solo Sokoa, at least his torso. Head sculpt looks pretty damn good, but they need to fix this formula. And I don't know what formula would be perfect, but they need to exhaust every option other than the Daniel Bryan torso. Daniel Bryan torso, I'd rather them do a Samoa Joe torso or something that's fatter than what he looks like than this super skinny thing. So, I don't know. That's just something I thought of and wanted to get out there. But we also had a look at an upcoming elite Johnny Gargano. No, he doesn't look like he's going to have... Gargano Syndrome or Johnny Gargano Syndrome. I like the gear here. His figure's prototype looks really, really good. And one thing I addressed in my problems video is that I think these kick pads look weird too. You know, they these look weird too. I think the old kick pad style with the you know, the way they used to do his, like the way they did his fan takeover figure, I think that works. I don't think they need to adjust that. They have new kick pad sculpts now, and they have adjusted it to where, you know, it's like the Elite 93 Rollins and the new Elite 97 Xavier Woods. Like, it's new kick pad sculpt, but just plugging that into the leg and then having knee pads over it, I don't know, it just looks weird because of that big gap that I'm seeing here, but I guess it's better than Johnny Gargano Syndrome, so I guess I can't you know, I don't know. I just think that that's one of the things that looked better beforehand before they adjusted it. But I guess it's better than Johnny Gargano syndrome. So you just got to hold it. But I like the head sculpt, like the formula. I think the Johnny Gargano looks good outside of the problems I obviously just mentioned. Now, we also got to see the Survivor Series Elite Wave British Bulldog Build-A-Figure from the Attitude Era. Let's get into the British Bulldog Build-A-Figure. I think it looks good here. This is going to be another Build-A-Figure. They said that if you use these lower legs for Scott Hall, that it would have made him too short, which, you know, I guess you just kind of have to take their word for that at this moment. But would you guys rather him be a little bit too short with the bunched up legs, like jeans tucked into the boots, or would you rather have him be in regular jeans and be tall enough? 
I guess it just depends on how damn short he is, but I think this looks good. I think this is a cool Build-A-Figure, and it's one that, you know, a lot of people have been wanting in their action figure, WWE action figure collections for sure, especially plugging in on that Attitude Era shelf. We have a basic of it in the Championship Showdown packs, but now actually having an actual Elite in a Build-A-Figure will be cool, but representing this Build-A-Figure set, we do have Survivor Series Shawn Michaels. This is a figure that we've wanted for a very long time. Schoolboy Shawn Michaels. You got the brown unfinished gear here, which is iconic. This could have went in the Defining Moments line to be honest with you, but I think it works well here. The only thing I hate about this is the prototype is showing off kick pads, and then when you look at this figure in the render image, he has cowboy boots on, but they have this, this, they're still using the lower legs as if he's going to have kick pads, but they just plugged in a cowboy boot mold that has really, really tall boots, which is not accurate at all, and I hope they don't do that. We addressed it again in the problems video. We went on and on about it, like addressing the issue at hand. Going to have to switch out those lower legs with just some, I don't know why you wouldn't just switch out the lower legs with some Christian lower legs or some other guy that's around Shawn Michaels size. Use his lower legs and then plug in the cowboy boot mold we've seen with Hogan or include the cowboy boot mold we saw with Cactus Jack. I think there's options there and I guess if Mattel doesn't do it, I'm definitely going to do it because I cannot have this figure with these long cowboy boots. They just look weird and odd because that's not how it was. But if you want more info on that, definitely go watch the problems video with upcoming WWE action figures. But this is a figure I've been wanting for a really long time time and I'm looking forward to the final result because you can't really judge this non-painted you know that there's lots of hoops and shish that's to come before this figure is actually released so it's just something I wanted to get out it's all my thoughts that are coming to me I want my full thoughts out on these videos because I didn't get an, a, a chance to do this over Mania weekend once I saw it I got to sit down I got to digest it all but the rest of the figures in this uh, in this British Bulldog build a figure set we do have Kevin Owens in the red shirt beautiful figure you guys know that Kevin Owens is one of my favorite wrestlers in the world I think he's a top five talent in the world love the red shirt this is a look of KO we didn't ever get in elite form so having it here is great I think it's a great formula. It should be a great figure, and I'm all for KO figures. So the more KO, the, the merrier for me. So KO looks good here. We also had Charlotte, which is, a, you know, it is what it is. You got the black top here. Uh, she does have some new sculpts going on, which I'm looking forward to. I feel like her Elite 92 figure was a huge letdown. I feel like it was just all paint, no sculpt, so it, lo it lacked depth. It lacked a lot of attention to detail, and I think this figure should be a whole lot better. And I think the prototype looks pretty solid. We also have Jerry the King Lawler here in the red gear. Solid looking head sculpt. It looks like his jacket's probably going to be rubber, which, you know, it is what it is. But I'll probably put the jacket on him, put the crown on him, take his elbow pads off, call it a day on the shelf. Because that's more of what I think of with Jerry the King Lawler. But, you know, it, it's a solid addition here. We saw him way back in Elite Series 82, which was a damn good underrated figure. I digress. We also had a look at an upcoming Elite Batista. This is going to be in the Royal Rumble line. So this Royal Rumble line is going to come with an elite Build-A-Figure Virgil, which we're going to get into, but in this set, we do have Batista. Obviously going to be his Royal Rumble 05 gear, which is going to be a great figure. I'd like to see a Royal Rumble 2005 John Cena when he got thrown over the top rope, but this is some solid gear. You know, you're going to have like red, silver, and, and black in there. It'll be a solid figure. You know, nothing like, it'll be very, very similar to the Ruthless Aggression Elite, pretty much, but I'm all for these throwback Batistas. These are things that I've been waiting on for years and years from Mattel, so them releasing this is all damn good with me. We also have a Beth Phoenix in this wave, which is very weird. Getting a Beth Phoenix here. Hopefully she will have double jointed knees. You know, we did get to see the prototype. I don't remember off the cuff if the if the prototype had double jointed knees or not, but we are getting a Beth Phoenix here, which I think is a solid inclusion. You know, I think it'll be cool to put up next to your edge figures. We also have Brock Lesnar coming in this wave, which I think is a solid addition. You're getting all the glove sculpts, and it is an updated head sculpt. It's going to be the Elite 96 Brock with the updated braided, you know, man bun or, you know, ponytail going down the middle, which I think works. I think this is great. I wouldn't even be shocked if they did an ultimate Brock with these head sculpts with a yelling expression with a pissed off expression whatever with the braided head and maybe a new t-shirt or maybe some new titles or, or something like that I could see them doing something like that as well but I like the Brock I'm all for Brock figures so that doesn't bother me at all and then rounding out our Royal Rumble set before the build a figure you do have Ridge Holland here which is another modern figure so we're getting a lot of modern figures in the set which I think is pretty cool I think his prototype looks sick my only thing is I feel like he this is a bit shredded for Ridge Holland I feel like Ridge Holland may be a little bit bigger than this but I guess I'm not really a connoisseur of Ridge Holland so I'm not gonna like critique it overly heavy like I don't really care about my Ridge Holland being as 
as accurate as I do my solo, if that makes sense. So, but I guess, you know, we do want our figures accurate. You know what I mean? We do want it across the board accurate, and I would want all of them accurate if I could have it that way. But I don't know. I was never really a Rich Holland guy, but this jacket looks good. I, I like the way it looks, but I do think that maybe it is a bit ripped up for him. And then for the build figure in the set, guys, is going to be Virgil, which, you know, I think it's a solid addition. An another non suited build a figure, which I guess will continue to be the thing, which again, we've covered in this video. I think that's awesome. I'm all for that. I don't have any issues with, you know, non suited build a figures. I think that that's something they need to explore. You know, it's not like Marvel Legends where they can pump out gigantic figures. We also had a look at a Braun Strowman Elite, which I think will be really cool. I think this looks good. It, it, he may be getting a new torso. This may be a new torso. I can't tell off the cuff, but he has leaned up some. You know, it looks like he is going to be in his red joggers, which will be a cool addition. Head skull looks good. This should be a really beefy figure, which is going to be nice. I always like big figures. They feel good in the hand and things like that. We had Carmelo Hayes, which also looked good. I think his figure looks nice. You got, you know, Grand Slam champion down there in NXT. I think he looks really awesome as well. Should be a really toyetic guy. Another one that I'm very much looking forward to. He's got his entrance coat as well. Lots of great cloth goods that we saw, man. So that's a really bright thing for the future. And speaking of cloth goods, it does look like the new Dominic Mysterio will also be including some cloth goods here. I know he has a John Cena shirt with the prototype, but they did say that, you know, that's just protos. That's just to uh, give, us you a, give you a look of what's to come. And so he will have like probably a Judgment Day shirt if I had to guess. But there is Dominic Mysterio. We also had a look at EO Sky. So we get an updated EO Sky there. And we also got to see Dakota Kai. But covering EO Sky first, I thought she looked great as well. Looks like we're getting a lot of new sculpts with the women's figures on their tops and their attires and things like that, which is so great. Instead of just one chest mold that's getting repainted a hundred times, give us some unique sculpts. Give us some new tops and things like that. So I think that's really great. And then we have Dakota Kai, which I think this is head and shoulders above her last figure. I think the figure prototype also looks great. I love Dakota Kai. I think she's very toyetic as well. I like the pink gear we're going to be getting. This is really cool. So we'll have our full damage control. I guess the only one we're waiting on is an updated Bailey. Haven't seen an, a figure of Bailey in a while since Elite 80 and then the Survivor Series Elite Wave. So I am waiting on a Bailey figure. We also had a look at a brand new upcoming Drew McIntyre. Not a ton of meat on the bone as far as his other figures, right? I mean, it looks just like our top talents, our Elite 89s of the world, you know, and uh, hopefully just this figure is just as good as those. I, I mean, this is a peak Drew McIntyre figure. I think those figures are just pretty much perfect for Drew McIntyre. I don't know how you really improve upon those, except for giving us new gears. I hope we get a WrestleMania 39 Drew. I'm sure we will. The next Drew we get should probably be his WrestleMania 39 white gear, which will be a great day in the MDT household. So that'll be great. But Drew McIntyre is looking good here. Had no issues with that. Also had Braun Breaker here. We have the regular version and the Chase. I love the pink Chase. I think that looks great. We also saw that prototype. I think the formula works. You know, I have no issues with the formula here. I think overall he looks like he collectively looks good. You know, they're going to give him that gigantic torso. He's got big arms. He's a big dude, so I'm all for the Braun Breaker head sculpt. Also looks good. It looks way better than his basic figure, I'd say. And then you also have his father in Rick Steiner, which all things being said here, we do have the WCW Steiner here. Love the boots with the airbrush designs. We do have his Beware of the Dog jacket, which it looks to be cloth, or it looks to be a rubber goods here. But one thing that's interesting is with all that thing, all the things that happened at that con, I don't know the full story. I read about it a little bit here. It's just very odd. It's just a weird situation and, and just overall just such insanity when you think of the timing between his figures and then he gets into controversy immediately. It's just one of those things that I guess remains to be seen on what's going to come to fruition with that whole situation. But I hope we get the figure, but I guess I guess we'll just have to play that situation by ear. We also had a new Becky Lynch Elite figure, which looks amazing. I think this may be the best Becky Lynch Elite of all time. I mean, the head sculpt looks good. I like what I'm seeing from here. This is like big time Bex, you know, like her weird shirts and like the prisms and kind of lady gaga inspired look kind of is what it reminds me of but the becky lynch looks really really good we also saw rocky maya via figure this looks to be a re-release of the target exclusive i'm imagining this is probably going to be in the greatest hits series three or something like that you know what i mean that's exactly what this points to for me so it's just going to be the rocky maya via figure with maybe slightly true effects head sculpt maybe some double jointed arms interchangeable hands and it will be pretty much what we saw from his target exclusive figure but there's rocky maya via we also had a new american made hulk hogan with the updated green championship which is another run of the mill hulk hogan it looks like the ultimate edition but it will be elite form american made shirt this is you know they're checking all the boxes of the hogan's it's going to be another red and yellow hogan with the updated skin tone and all those different things so you know, this figure right here is going to sell. Like, Hulk Hogan figures like this are going to sell. It's going to be like 
Roman Reigns, they're going to change one little thing or they're going to re-release a figure with like a new shirt or something like that with very similar stuff. And it's going to move. It's going to move units and, you know, it's going to it's gonna capture the hearts of many. So that's just one of those things. But I'm all for more Hulk Hogan's, I guess. I just wish they wouldn't have included the one on the Ultimate Edition, you know, Nitro Stage Crowdfunder. But getting into one of the figures I'm most excited for is going to be the Stone Cold Steve Austin from WrestleMania 38 versus Kevin Owens. We have this new Stone Cold head sculpt. He's got the Austin 316 shirt. And we're finally getting jorts for our Stone Cold Steve Austin elites. For the first time since his Hall of Fame figure, I love the dry brush detail on these shorts. I can't wait to see what the figure looks like in its entirety. It doesn't look like it's sculpted on as much as we saw with his last figure, but I'm hoping that they use this mold for repaints down the line. You know, you could easily paint these shorts black and give us the Stone Cold Steve Austin a baseball jersey or another t-shirt. You could, you know, lighten up these jeans a little bit more and give us, you know, late 90s Austins. There's just so many options here. So finally giving us a new trunks, finally giving us new jorts with Stone Cold Steve Austin is beautiful because we know that it's going to result in more figures, which is what we want in that era. This is something I've been waiting on for Mattel for a very long time now. So getting that for me is, uh, is chef's kiss. I don't have any issues with it. But but I think that is every single WWE Elite that they revealed over Mania Weekend, man. So many figures. And we still haven't even covered the basics, the battle packs, the superstars, the retros, all those different other figures that we have not included just yet. So you have all the ultimates we covered just the other day, which was like a 30-minute video. Then you have this video, which is going to be pushing an hour. I don't, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but it's going to definitely be very long. It's going to be longer than the Ultimates because there's so many damn figures, man. There's just so many action figures that they showed off. It was so crazy. It was the biggest event I think they've ever done. They've never shown that amount of action figures ever. I was completely overwhelmed, but... That is going to wrap up my coverage of every WWE Elite figure that we saw over Mania Weekend, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. I like the long-winded videos. You know, you get to sit back, chill, pop a cold one, eat some food, and just talk about action figures, man. So that's, that's all good for me, but... Huge shout out to our patrons over there on Patreon. If you guys are interested in uh, any benefits or any of the cool things we got going over on Patreon, figure giveaways, voting for upcoming videos, behind the scenes, just whatever, you know, I feel like posting up there a lot of the times is usually what happens. We got an MDT closet tour up over there. There's like lots of different things that you can get in on and things of the future that you can get in on. Patron packages, like all kinds of stuff. So, Definitely go check that out if that's something that interests you. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on all these figures down in the comment section below. Do you hate any of these figures? What figure are you most hyped for? Leave me all those things down in the comment section below. Also, ProWrestlingTees.com slash MyDamnToys. You can get in on some MDT merch, which I greatly appreciate. It helps support the channel. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. Whoa.